The World Health Organization has called climate change the single biggest health threat facing humanity. And tonight, on the eve of Earth Day, the Ontario Medical Association is putting a spotlight on the issue, hosting an event on how climate change impacts our health and what we can do about it. Joining us live are two of tonight's speakers. Dr. Kim Chi Tran is a surgeon and the co-founder and co-chair of Green is Health. And Dr. Millie Roy is an ophthalmologist of Ontario, co-chair the Canadian Association of Physicians for the Environment. Dr. Roy, let's begin with you. In what ways does climate change affect our health? Well, there are certainly many ways. Um, first and foremost is heat in and of itself is, is, can be a killer. We, we suffered uh, nearly 600 people died in BC from the heat dome just last year. Uh, along with that, along with heat comes forest fires. The forest fire smoke uh, can potentiate uh, COVID-19 infection. It can exacerbate uh, asthma and other respiratory diseases um, and contribute to cardiovascular disease. We're seeing a rise in many infectious diseases such as Lyme disease and West Nile um, and the rise of allergic diseases uh, and, and so on. So there's quite a, quite a long list. And and Yes, and in addition to mental health impacts that are quite, quite uh, significant. Sure, I'll touch on the mental health impacts with Dr. Tran. So not just the physical impacts. How is climate change impacting our mental health with all of these issues that we're dealing with? Certainly. There's the anxiety that comes with knowing that climate change will cause global warming and that will lead to greater natural disasters. So there's that anxiety of knowing that this is coming. There's the impact of the, the global warming effects themselves. So, for example, droughts, heat waves, uh, floods. So that also will have a negative impact on mental health, as well as lack of resources for those who do need treatment for health-related issues. And so, Dr. Roy, this might be surprising to some people, but the healthcare industry is a surprisingly large source of greenhouse gases. What changes should be made within the healthcare industry itself? Sure, the first thing we need to do, and, and this is already underway, is to understand where, where we can do better. And we know, for instance, that a lot of our, our carbon burden comes from our building infrastructure, so we can improve on that. We know that we're generating a lot of waste with disposable items that we mm -hmm. can look at uh, using reusables, and that in itself also improves the carbon burden of the what's called the upstream carbon from manufacturing, shipping, and so on. Um, so certainly some of this work is underway. We can identify what's called practice hotspots, so areas in delivering health care where there's disproportionate carbon being released, whether it's aesthetic gases, uh, something as simple as the uh, asthma inhaler that your family doctor may choose to prescribe for you. We can choose more water. So there are, there are many um, issues of this nature that we can hmm. learn. About. Yeah, I don't think that was something that many people would be too familiar with that the healthcare industry would be a, a leader uh, in many of these issues. So, Dr. Tran, why do you think it's important for doctors to be climate advocates with uh, so much talk about uh, as we're discussing the issues on our physical and our mental health? Certainly. I think it's important for physicians to be involved or doctors to be involved because this directly impacts health healthcare, our patients, our families. I feel like it's our professional duty, it's our oath to do no harm, uh, for us to be advocates in really reducing the impacts of climate change on our patients and in the world at large. So overall, just kind of like an overall approach, saying it's not just about fixing uh, your uh, physical ailments or dealing with mental health issues, but being an overall advocate for change, correct? Exactly. It's about preventative health care. If we can lessen the effects of climate change, then we'll lessen the health care side effects or the health burden side effects of it. Dr. Roy, final question to you. You ended your talk on a note of optimism. I think we all need, right, uh, need that right now. Fill us in on uh, what we can be optimistic about here. Absolutely. There, you know, in the midst of, of all the bad news, there's been a lot of good news, and, and a lot of it is very recent. We, one of our, our biggest ways in, in combating climate change is reducing greenhouse gases, and that in turn relates to energy use. We need to get off fossil fuels, and just recently, renewable green energy became the cheapest source of, of energy on the planet. So suddenly, the math works out in terms of the cost 
uh, as we clean up our air quality as well, which again, air pollution is actually a huge contributor to, in, in terms of human health risks. And of course, we generate less carbon and, and begin this, this massive task of, of turning around climate, uh, climate change. Um, there, there's a lot of, of new innovations mm -hmm. that are very useful. Dr. Tran and Dr. Roy, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank you.